permutation counts the number of ways we can arrange a number of objects. P52 will be the number of ways to take five items and arrange two of them. Pick two and put them in order. There's a formula to compute the permutations. In particular, P and R, which is n objects taken r at a time, is going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 all the way down to n minus r plus 1. This looks like a complicated formula, but really all you're doing is multiplying down and you take r terms. So as an example, you want to take a look at p72. This will be two terms starting at 7, so 7 times 6, or 42. Another example, p143 will be the number of ways to arrange 3 out of 14 objects, and then it'll just be 14 times 13 times 12 which is 2,184. If for an arbitrary number n we want to see what pn2 is, we're going to multiply n times the number smaller than n, n times n minus 1. A combination is the number of ways to choose a certain number of objects. So c52 is the number of ways to choose 2 out of a total of 5 items. The biggest difference between the permutations and combinations is that permutations are in order, combinations don't have to be. So for a permutation, we're going to choose our objects, then put them in some sort of order. For a combination, all we have to do is choose. Taking a look at C and R, the formula for this is going to be permutations divided by R factorial. That's the product of all the numbers up to R. As an example, let's take a look at C72. This is going to be p72 divided by 2 factorial. That's 7 times 6 over 2 times 1, which is 2. So we get 21. A little more abstractly, let's take a look at cn2. This will be the number of ways to choose 2 out of our n objects. So that's pn2 divided by 2 factorial, or n times n minus 1, all divided by 2. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have four animals, and we're allowed to choose two of them to keep. The other two we have to give away to a nice home. In this case, the order itself doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I choose one to keep first or second. I'm just keeping two of the animals. So I'm going to use a combination. This will be C42. Out of my four objects, or animals in this case, I want to choose two of them, and it doesn't matter what order I'm doing it in. So we take a look at the formula. This will be p42 divided by 2 factorial. 2 factorial is just 2. p42 is going to be 4 times 3. So 4 times 3 over 2 gives me 6. And that means there's 6 ways to choose 2 of my animals. OK, for this one, the order itself doesn't matter, because if I choose the horse and the cow to keep, it doesn't matter which place they go. So we can take a look at all the six different ways we can do this. Okay, let's take a look at a related problem. We have four animals, and now we want to choose two of them, but we're going to take the two and put them into specified stalls. So in this case, we're going to have our two stalls, and it's going to matter which animal we put into which stall. And so because the order matters, we're going to use the permutation. So p42 is just 4 times 3, or 12. So there should be 12 ways of doing this. Taking a look at this, we have our stall A and stall B, and cow and horse is different than horse and cow, which means the order matters. So here's the 12 ways. You might notice that all this is is the multiplication principle. There are four choices for what animal to put in stall A, and then there were three choices for what animal to put in stall B. The thing to remember is that if order matters, we have to use the permutations. If it doesn't, we'll use a combination.